Does a monster roam the remote forest of North America? Some know it as Bigfoot. Others call it Sasquatch. Eyewitnesses describe a creature covered with hair, walking on two legs, towering over eight feet tall and sporting massive arms and shoulders. Join us as we examine the evidence, interview the eyewitnesses, and ponder the mystery on Sasquatch Watch Radio. And now, here are your hosts for Sasquatch Watch Radio, Billy Willard and the Creature Seeker. All right, welcome everyone to another episode of Sasquatch Watch Radio. Today is September 8th. 2015 and before we get started with our show we always want to remind everyone to uh, take a look at our sponsor uh, our sponsor being audible.com uh, audible.com of course is a website that you can go to and download your favorite audio books to listen to for your listening pleasure they have over 180 some thousand different titles to choose from so it doesn't hurt to check them out and the way you can check them out is uh, to get a free audiobook as well as a 30-day trial. You go to audibletrial.com forward slash Sasquatch Watch Radio. Again, to get your 30-day free trial as well as your free audiobook download, go to audibletrial.com forward slash Sasquatch Watch Radio. So I hope you guys will check them out. It's 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 uh, it's worth an exam, and that's for sure. Oh, so without further ado, let's get our friend, the creature seeker, in the room. How are you doing tonight, Bruce? Billy, I'm I'm doing better tonight than I did over the weekend. Well, that's that's well. So what happened over the weekend? Uh, this yeah, it's kind of a loaded comment. Well, a friend of mine was in town and she called me up and said, hey, let's get together. You know, I hadn't seen her in a long time. So we went down to the beach, and there was this, you know, old-style arcade there. And you know what, you know what skee-ball is, Billy? Yes. These little these balls about the size of a softball, you roll it up the ramp, and the, and the goal is to try and get the ball in these circles, right? So the top circle is like 50 points. The circle underneath that's 40, 30, 20. And if you totally miss, right, you at least get 10 points, right? Gotcha. So I'm like, oh, well, you know, I used to be pretty good at this when I was a kid. So I put in a quarter, you get nine balls. Really, I, I wasn't doing well by any measure, by any standard. <laughs> so the – I was getting – so – the 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 minimum number of points you get is like ninety points, right? If you totally miss it, I was right. scoring like one one ten, one twenty. Occasionally, wow. I get one forty. So, you know, it was it was a little embarrassing. But then the worst thing, then this family came in, and then there's like four little kids, like ages like five to seven, and they were they were incredible. So they're they're like, you know, they're rolling like, you know, the first off the bat, these kids are rolling like 220, 280, you know. <laughs> One kid's like 310, right? And here I am, I'm just, I'm just rolling like, you know, like these measly, you know, 130s, 110s, 120s. So uh, needless to say, it was kind of embarrassing. But I, I, they, they were actually looking down on me, Billy, because... <laughs> My, my score was was not uh, was not very good. So I was determined. I was determined to beat this kid's high score. Plus, there was this like stuffed animal, and I wanted to win it for my friend. You know, it's, that's, that's kind of like a memento of our of our visit. So, you know, I'm you know, I, I'm really trying hard, Billy, and 
you know, I spent like now for a quarter you get nine balls, right? Right. So after spending like seventy five bucks, <laughs> I only had like two hundred and twenty points. Like two hundred and twenty tickets. Bruce, why would you why would you spend seventy five bucks? Billy, it was the you know, the whole thing. I wanted to win the stuffed animal for my for my friend. So you sh- I should have just went and bought it. one. Well, look. So I, I take my, I, you know, I take my tickets up to the counter, and and I was like, you know, I want that stuffed animal, right? And the guy behind the counter he looks at me, and he's like, he goes, that stuffed animal, fifteen hundred tickets. I was, he was like, you, you know, you can have what's in this case. And Billy, my choices were, uh, I could get these plastic handcuffs that obviously didn't work. Uh, and there was a, a plastic back scratcher that looks like it, it was so flimsy it would have busted. You couldn't even scratch, like, the wart on the toad's back end with it, all right? It was so flimsy. And, I, and Bill, you know what? I couldn't even – I wanted the rubber snake, but I couldn't even get that. So Because I was, like, 20 tickets short of getting a rubber snake. Well, so for, 70, I, for $75, you could have went and bought about a dozen of each of those items. I know, Billy, at that rate, right, at $75 per 210 tickets, I, I would have had to have spent $852.27 just to get 1,500 tickets to, to get that stuffed animal, right? So anyway, it, it just worked. So, you know, I couldn't decide what to get, and they have a box up there, and, and the, the guy was like, you know what, we have a box here if you just want to donate your tickets. And I'm like, for what? And the guy was like, well, Sometimes kids come up to the counter and they want to buy stuff with their tickets, but they don't have enough tickets. So we just reach into the box and we supplement their their, their tickets with this, you know, with these donations. So I, you know, I was like, all right, fine. So I donate my ticket, but then I started thinking, you know, what are we teaching kids, Billy? You know, we're te- we're already teaching kids to live outside their means. You know, when I was a kid, right? You you, you played the games. Took all the tickets you had, you brought up the counter, and then you could see what you, you could afford, right? If there's something you wanted and you couldn't afford it, there was, you know, kids have a very special mechanism. You know what it's called, Billy? It's called being bummed out. Uh, you know, you were bummed out for like 10 seconds, and then you got what you could afford. You got like a rubber ball or something like that. And, you know, it was, it was like a, still a good day. Like your life wasn't ruined. But now we've got like this box, this welfare box for kids now. Can you believe that? Anyway, <laughs> I, did, I, I did donate my tickets, and uh, my friend, she she felt good about that. So, anyway, there's that. But when I got home that night, I actually went online, and I found this guy. He's a two-time national ski ball champion. He's got a website. He's called Joey the Cat, and he's got some tips on his website. I might, you know, I might just um, contact him for some private lessons. That, that, that was my weekend, Billy. Well, I had I had my Bruce moment today. Oh, what happened? Well, I had to go to the doctor because the doctor had put me on this new blood pressure medication. So after you know you take it for the first thirty days, they kind of want to check up on you, make sure everything's okay, and that kind of thing. So I I go up and I go into the doctor, and I sit there and I wait, and it takes him a while before he finally comes in and. You know, they check my blood pressure. Blood pressure is all in normal limits for the first time in I don't know how many years. And, uh, you know, he's pretty happy about it. And uh, so he asked me, he said, how have you been feeling? I said, well, I said, uh, I said, I have to admit I've been a little dizzy. Uh, I told him, I said, I got up one morning and felt like I was having a little bit of vertigo. So I went to see the, the ear, nose, and throat guy. And he checked me out, said everything was okay, and asked me about my potassium levels and stuff like that because of the medication I was on. And I told him, I said, and so he told me to come back and tell you about that, and maybe you should check that out. So as we're going on into the conversation, uh, you know, he's talking about, you know, how he said, you know, he was really happy because I'd, I'd lost another six pounds since the last time he saw me, so... You know, I've lost over 30 pounds uh, in the past few months. 
So he was happy about that. And then, then he says, but listen, he goes, I still want you to lose some more weight. I was like, okay. He goes, now listen, the last time we did a blood test for you, you know, you're really borderline diabetic. I said, well, yeah, that's, you know. I said, what do I do about that? He goes, well, listen. He goes, you're going to have to go on a low-carb diet. He goes, you know, it's all nice and everything that you're doing, you know, counting your calories and things like that. He says, but you really, he says, you really need to shoot for low-carb, he says, or preferably no carbs. He says, just so that you can drop the weight just a little bit faster. I was like, oh, okay, so... And then and then it, and then I had this light bulb come up right and this it was that Bruce moment. So I looked at Doctor Square and I said, Oh, so what you're saying is instead when I go to the pizza place, I get thin crust instead of paying pizza. <laughs> and he and he so looked at me. He looked at me. me. He looked at me with no expression on his face. And I of course I was laughing, but he wasn't laughing. He goes, and he did, seriously, he goes, no pizza, period. <laughs> and of course, I was like, come on, man, talk, come on. <laughs> so I had to text Janine and said, I just had my Bruce moment in the doctor's office. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> well, didn't work. You know, I got myself in trouble. So, just for that, he sent me over for more blood work, and and I, I swear, to, I, I swear, I think that the lab nurse was poking me hard on purpose. Because I'll tell you what, that was the when she took the blood, that was that hurt the most I've ever had any blood taken. I'll tell you right now. So I think she like did it on purpose. Billy, I'm telling you, those needles, they get bigger and bigger every year. The, the last, I still have harpoon scars the last time they tried to draw blood from me. So, well, here, it, part of it's my fault because, you know, when I went in there, I thought I was just going in for a checkup, right? Yeah. And he didn't say nothing about blood work or anything. So, I, you know, I'm assuming I'm just going in here for a checkup. Well, Bruce, I hadn't drank any water all morning. And... It's always good to drink a lot of water before you go get blood work. So I get in there, and the lab nurse sits me down, and I looked at her right in the eye. I said, look, ma'am, I said, I, you know, maybe I should come back later. I said, I haven't had any water this morning. She goes, what? She goes, you have a, why haven't you drank any water? I said, well, ma'am, I've been busy. I said, I got up. I, I had to go to the office. I had to get some stuff done and then rush over here. I said, I just had... I haven't had time to get me any water. And then she looked at me square in the eye and says, well, sucks to be you. Give me your arm. <laughs> I was like, what? Good Lord. I, I swear, man, I'm like, it's got something to do with hanging around with you, Bruce. <laughs> sure, blame it on me, Billy. <laughs> Although, I do admit, we're... we're Weird things always happen to me. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> so, um, we got an interesting topic to talk about tonight. Uh, and I think, I think uh, you're the one that kind of came up with this. And, you know, we've, we've heard a lot. We've had a couple of shows and we've talked kind of between, you know, talked about Bigfoot. We've talked about Dogman. You know, we had we had of course we had Dan on last week and we kinda of got into a conversation about you know, what Dan's thoughts were about Bigfoot and Dogman. So kinda of, it kinda of, you know, invented itself I guess to talk about Bigfoot and Dogman and whether or not there's some kind of connection. So, um we are going to have. I, I, I'm assuming we're going to have a couple guests calling in here tonight who who both have had some experience in taking uh, both Bigfoot and Dogman uh, sightings and worked on them. Um, I haven't seen him key in yet, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna have uh, Jody Cook coming on. Uh, and do you have anybody coming from your end, Bruce? 
Yeah, so uh, Brian Teach will be calling in uh, a little bit later, okay. Billy. Okay. So, so this topic, you know, we have talked about dogmen before. We've had people on the show who have done a lot of research with, with the, the dogman phenomena. You know, uh, Linda Godfrey, you know, Jody's been on the show talking about it. You know, Dan Baker mentioned it. So it, it's sort of we've been dancing around the issue. And so the question is, well, what exactly is this dogman thing? Is this dogman just a misidentification was was you know were people actually seeing something else and misidentified it as a dog man? Could they have been seeing Bigfoot and misidentified it as a dog man? Uh, you know, I just don't know where the dog man fits in the evolutionary, you know, schedule. <laughs> you know, like did the right. dog man appear like a thousand years ago? You know, there's no I, I don't know. I don't it seems like this dog man thing just sort of came up now, interestingly enough, there are some, uh, I believe, Native American traditions. I think the Inuits talk about a creature, but I could be wrong about this. But I think it's they, they think of it more as a, as a spirit rather than an actual live, you know, flesh and blood creature. So, okay. what is the, what is the dog man? You know, people swear that they've seen a creature that stands. That's, uh, very hairy, stand upright on two legs, and they uh, see a pronounced snout, a muzzle, and they see pointed ears. So, and people are adamant that they've seen this, that they, they know what they saw, and they're very, you know, they're very sure about these features. So, I thought it would be, you know, kind of an interesting topic to to explore, you know, and this is a calling show, I believe. So, you know, what what exactly are we dealing with here? You know, right. we um, right. and it's just sort of it's a huge question, and it's kind of weird because you know you talk about dog man, and it's so accepted now. But I remember a time, Billy, when you were doing if you were doing Bigfoot research, you might get a dog man report, but you just kind of like. Yeah, I'm gonna just put this. I'm gonna put this report aside because you didn't really know what to do with it. It didn't, it didn't really fit into your Bigfoot research. You know, if you're into cryptozoology, then maybe you could follow up on it. But there's probably even less evidence to support the existence of a dogman creature than there is Bigfoot. So it's very, it's very, very scant evidence. So I don't know, Billy. What do you think? What do you think the dogman is? Well. You know, I, that's one thing I haven't done a lot of studying on, um, other than, you know, s- some really quick uh, stuff looking at what other researchers have talked about. Um, so, I don't know. You know, it, it's 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 almost like you know we 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 almost have the same arguments for Bigfoot as we do Dogman as far as evidence is concerned. But, you know, people have you know, obviously taking casts of very large, what appears to be canine prints that, you know, or I guess just as just as alleged as a Bigfoot print. Uh, I know there's been a lot of sightings, um, and I honestly don't have an opinion. You know, or I can't tell you what we're dealing with. I don't know what we're dealing with. No different than I do Bigfoot. So, you know, to me, I'm kind of. I'm kind of I'm kind of game. I, I just have to hear what what other folks say about it and what they think because, you know, I know nothing about the dog man. I mean, I just simply don't. I mean, there's some there's some parts of the country where the dog man seems to be more folklore, and I think if you get into the Appalachians, Billy, especially down in you know, the Kentucky area, I think there's probably a lot more sightings. When I was in Kentucky, that was when I first heard of a dogman sighting. And, you know, at the time, I wasn't even doing Bigfoot research. I was actually doing a, uh, some paranormal research at the Waverly Hills Sanatorium. And yeah. one, of the guy, one of the guys uh, in our group, we were just, you know, when you go something, there are a lot of idle moments, like, like if you're Bigfoot researching over in Clearfield County, where you're, like, bored to death and nothing's going on. 
Um, so he started telling me about, you know, his experiences. And at the time, I was like, well, yeah, obviously someone's been, you know, get, getting a little bit too much hooch down there in Kentucky because the whole <laughs> idea of a dog man, you know, just really, it didn't make sense to me. It didn't seem like there was a lot of evidence to support it, just anecdotal people who had sightings or whatever. And I, I still, to this, day, to this day, haven't seen uh, a photograph or anything that convinces me that a dog man actually exists. Now, uh, I will and I will say that probably the only photograph or video that, that convinces me that there might be something to the Bigfoot phenomenon is the Patterson-Gimlin film. But other than that, we're, you know, after all these years, Billy, there's, there's not... There's not a lot of, you know, solid proof that even Bigfoot exists. You know, sure, we have casts, we have, you know, hair samples, um, but it's it's very circumstantial. You know, when, yeah. when, you, when you look at the hair samples and you try to compare it to something in the database, you know, all you can come up with is, you know, it's it doesn't match anything in the database and it seems to be primate. Well, that's not exactly conclusive. You know? Right, right. Well, let's. Uh, why don't we go ahead and get uh, someone here that's uh, gotten some dog man sightings and and maybe see what he thinks. Uh, Jody Cook, welcome to the show. Hey Billy, how you doing? <clears throat> hey, Jody. hey Bruce, how you doing, buddy? Pretty good. So, so, so Jody, you, you're right. you've done some. Dog man research, right? What's that? You broke up. You've, you've done some dog man research. Yeah, I, I, I've been doing it for the last couple of years. Um, a lot, a lot of the dog man sightings that you know people are having, you know, obviously I think some of them are misidentification of Bigfoot sightings. You know, um, you know, you, you take the dog man sightings as a whole, or the characteristics. It's kind of broken down to like four groups. Okay, like type one would be more like your Bigfoot um, size, bulkiness, um, characteristics, you know, the looks. And that's where your misidentification comes in there. Then you have your type two, which your type two is more more similar characteristics to what Bigfoot is, but it has a snout and it has pointy ears. Then when you go to like a type three, that's where you it's very dog looking uh canine looking but the feet are more and the legs are more human um if you understand what i'm saying uh, yeah, they're like more human like your typical werewolf but then you have your canine which is your van helsing style dog man where <clears throat> excuse me the legs are more like a canine's leg, mm -hmm. where you know you have the actual paw, you know, four toe paw. Um, they've been quite a few characteristics, you know, in in sightings and um, footprints and stuff of you know your type one or your excuse me your type three and your your canine. Um, I heard you talk about you know Kentucky and things like that. You know, they they there's a large history of sightings in Kentucky, especially at lands between the lakes. Um, they've had well over a hundred documented sightings just in that area. Um, you know, Michigan's pretty provident. Obviously we know about Wisconsin, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio. Um, there's, there's sightings all, all over the country. Okay. But the majority of the sightings in the United States is more of a, you know, the Pacific, or excuse me, the northeastern part of the country from about Wisconsin going all the way up to New York State, from Michigan going down to about um, Kentucky. Those were majority of all the sightings were taking place. Yes, we do have some in California, Louisiana, you know, out west and things like that, but it's not as prominent the amount of sightings that, that's coming out of the northeast. Um, you know, what do you attribute that to, Jody? I, you know, honestly, I, 
you know, through my research, I, I, I sit there and I, 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 I thought about this and I thought about it. You know, um, I, I don't think it, it's the wood line or anything like that. Um, I just think that, you know, there's just a so sm- much small population of them. And this is just the area that they seem to be at. Um, it, you know, obviously, you know, they're, you know, the Bigfoot population is, it's much bigger. And even if you look at Native American culture, <clears throat> you know, when you, when they talk about the dog man, and I'm not talking about skinwalkers cause that's something totally different. Um, you know, there, there are very few and in between that they talk about. And it's mostly <clears throat> Northeastern tribes that, that talk about it. Now, yeah, you, you have the Apache, um, you know, out west and stuff that that talk about it, but they also talk a lot about, you know, skinwalkers, and like I said, that's that's something totally different because that's more human than it is actual, you know, a werewolf type thing or dogman type thing. Mm-hmm. So, Billy, did you, you know when you were doing research in Virginia? Did you ever come across any dogman sightings in Virginia? I have never, never had a sighting report uh, in Virginia on this. And I, to be honest, I can't recall ever seeing one. So I, I don't know that there has ever been a dogman sighting in Virginia. I, now we have do – you, do you know of any, Jody? I, I just know of um, one that came out of um, Virginia. And like I said, it's a, it's a very short um, – Sighting. I'm trying to look it up for you right now, um, but that, like I said, that's the only one I've ever, ever gotten out of Virginia. Um, most of the stuff, like I said, I've been getting. Now, West Virginia, that's a, <laughs> that's a different thing there. You know, they've been getting a lot of sightings and stuff out of there. Um, I'm trying to look it up here because I obviously I don't know it off the top of my head because, like I said, it's just a very Short, small, you know, sighting. Like you said, it was just the only one um, that I have ever, you know, came across. But like I said, I, you know, majority of all the sightings that I'm getting are taking place Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania. You know, coming up through uh, Wisconsin. Uh, that's where it seems to be the majority of you know a lot of the stuff that I'm getting. Can you tell us about the latest dog man sighting in Ohio? The latest one um, has actually been in Germantown, Ohio. Um, there've been quite a few sightings in this area. What's what's going on? Um, you know, with, with my investigation going on there, and Adam Davy, you know, is a researcher up there. Um, we we both have found carcasses of dogs, large dogs, uh, carcasses of cows. Um, that's been taken into an area and you can obviously see they've been eating been eaten on because of, um, uh, you can see bite marks on the remains of the bones and stuff. And, you know, the, the farmers in that area, they take it very serious. I mean, they, they all get together and patrol each other's farms. You know, um, they, they definitely know that there's something there. I, um, the DNR actually is came in and took up, a lot of the land where a lot of the sightings are um, taking place, and they've been putting signs up saying this is now a controlled area, and you can't go in there. And uh, it, it, you know, they they definitely know that there uh, that there's definitely something there. Um, but just like you said, just recently, you know, um, we got a, a Google image. Um, we did, you know, Google Earth of an area, and we got something very large walking through a field. You know, is it a dog man? It's hard saying, but it's awfully, awfully big. Um, you know, where you know where it's going through this field here. Um, just had to recent another sighting of, um, you know, one where a you know farmer was going out to his barn, and this thing, you know had a chicken in its mouth and you know at first he thought it was a coyote until it stood up on both legs and you know ran hopped over the fence put its arm out and hopped over the fence and took off you know on on you know two legs until it got to one point it was able to get on all fours um and you know 
the guy just, you know, his whole thing was he just, you know, it, to him it was a dog, but this dog was able to run on its hind legs. And he described it being about seven and a half feet, extremely muscular dog. Uh, one thing he did say about it was that the hands, the front paws, the 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 fingers were much larger. They were longer. It still looked like a paw, but it was very human looking, you know, compared to, you know, a, a dog's, you know, dog's paw. So I thought that was kind of interesting in, in, on that sighting. Jody, do you think, where does the dog man fall in the evolutionary, you know, tree? I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I, 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 I don't know. Um, I personally believe, and I, I've talked to Linda Goffrey about this, you know, that this thing is, it's, it's a canine species, you know, it somehow it evolved to where it's able to walk on two legs, you know, run on two legs, uh, stand erect. Um, I, I, but I don't think it's in, you know, the evolution of like man or anything like that. It's just, it's somewhere within, you know, the evolution of dog, you know, and, and that's the best guess. I mean, we don't know. And it's, it's really hard saying because there's just not enough information or if you want to say proof out there other than, you know, sightings, um, tracks and, you know, blurry pictures, you know, there's just not enough to go by. And, you know, I mean, I, I've got hair samples that I've, you know, pulled out of, you know, Daniel Boone National Forest, um, that I pulled out of um, uh, Land Between the Lakes up in Akron, you know, um, they're, they were looked at, you know, they known to be canine, you know, but these things were, you know, you know, six, seven feet off the ground and trees, you know, so it, it's hard saying, honestly, but, you know, the, the whole thing, you know, if you want to think about it, I mean, human testimony, you know, in this field, even ufology or, you know, the paranormal, it, it only matters to people like us, you know. Human testimony doesn't matter to the science, you know. Human testimony is only good to prosecute someone in a court of law. But to say, you know, that I saw a Bigfoot or I saw a dog man, you know, it, it, you know that's just not enough to hey, go Bruce. by. Hey, Bruce, we got a couple people hanging on the line. Um okay. Let me get this first one is at area code 724 and then 777. You're on the air. How you doing, Bruce and Billy? Jody? Oh, hey, Brian. Hey, it's that guy from uh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> hey, how about that guy from Ohio? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go Steelers, Jody. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Bengals. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian has done some research. He, he had some dog man reports, and he even did – a uh, field trip, if you want to call that, to investigate the Shenango dog boy incident. Uh, Brian, do you want to tell us a little about the Shenango dog boy incident, what that sighting, what happened there? Yes, that was up in uh, uh, Mercer County, uh, up around the uh, uh, up around the Shenango Lake area. Uh, the, the episode was actually even done on Monsters and Mysteries. Uh, Basically, there was, uh, in, the, in the late 60s, this uh, similar, almost like a dog-like creature that was, uh, it actually ran and it attacked, grabbed one of the uh, one of our the eyewitnesses who we ended up talking with, tried to drag her down the road. But uh, through some actual other research, we believe we're starting to lean towards now maybe that that was actually just a, a, a young, maybe a deformed boy with uh, hypertrichosis. Which is uh, called it's commonly called it has like a werewolf syndrome type thing, where, and, where they just uh, throw hair all you know excessive hair all over their body, right? Yes, and uh, but this this boy we you know believe he was a little malformed. He had uh, his hands were sort of hoof you know had like sort of hoofs on them. Uh, we believe he was also possibly malformed you know malformed, but he was able to run extremely fast on all fours. Uh, just recently we come across some other information that. Possibly, this young boy, the Shenango Valley area, and uh, went up to Erie, Pennsylvania, where they had, uh, they would call, they called it the Erie Wolf Boy, and it was about ten years later, 
and um, with tracking it down, he we we believe we even have the address. You know, I, I've talked to a bunch, you know, some people on the internet, and um, we believe it may be the same actual boy who who he was up in Erie, and they actually had him in uh, in a basement with uh, bars on the windows, and they would see him growling and uh, a red light in in, in his window. Uh, possibly because of his eyes, or uh, I don't exactly know what that was from, but we're still looking into that. But uh, maybe putting two and two together, thinking that wasn't a quote unquote uh, dog boy per se, just a regular boy uh, with, with possibly hy- hypertrichosis and some malformity. But we also, that's also in the 90s, though, they actually saw a creature that actually did resemble uh, your typical uh, dogman report. It was a canid creature. Uh, several boys saw it. We inter- interviewed a, a gentleman up there, and several of his friends saw it in, uh, in the late 90s. So actually, Pennsylvania right now is actually having a flap of, of these dogman reports starting in July um, up at Bruce's favorite place, Clearfield County. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Lonnie Strickler uh, received the report of a, uh, of a creature, uh, a wolf-like canid creature, uh, eating roadkill on the side of the road, and it stood up and ran into the woods. Uh, about a week week after that, Dave and Kerry Rupert of the Legend Hunters went up there, and they researched the general area, walked around, tried to find prints, things like that. Uh, so we were just up there actually two, uh, two, three days ago on Saturday, and we checked out the same area. It's a very, very uh, uh, creepy woods, I will say that. It gives you kind of a feel up there. It, uh, there's pines in there. It's all marshy. We didn't really – we found a couple of human prints, but uh, they were bigger than Dave's, but – they weren't Dave and Carrie's, but uh, other than that, we didn't find any evidence up there. Did, now, Brian, did you say that this boy was re- reportedly this boy had hooves, cloven hoofs? As as this is what our eyewitness told us, they appeared to be hoofs, kind of cloven, you know, cloven like. But it could have been again; it was getting dark, so it could have been those. It could have been hands, actual hands that were just kind of like malformed. Well, here's a. Here's a funny little anecdote. Back in 19, well, let's say the early 1990s, I used to know a guy who's from uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, Lancaster, sorry. Uh, and that's on the, I believe that's on the eastern side. Yes, yes. So he told me a story, which you just reminded me of, about the legend of Chickie's Rock. So supposedly, mm-hmm. there's a place called Chickie's Rock State Park or something like that out there? Yes, yes. And hunters out there reportedly saw a little boy cloven hoods, mm-hmm. and he was wild. And whenever mm-hmm. they tried to, like, get near him, because they obviously, you know, he, it's not normal to see uh, a little boy running around the woods on a company with anyone, but still, you know, with cloven hooves. He, he he ran away, and they, he was just too fast for them. So mm-hmm. now fast forward to, you know, the, the Shenango dog boy. It's, it's almost like the, the same types of characteristics people are reporting. Mm-hmm. What is the, you know, what is the, what are the chances, Brian, that these people are, that just made up that story? I mean, you you interviewed them personally. What is, I mean, did, was, were they credible? Yeah, so I believe I believe that they saw this. Uh, we interviewed uh, two eyewitnesses up in Mercer County, and actually, when we were at the uh, uh, Erie uh, Mufon conference, I interviewed a guy up there, and he's the one that told me about the story. And I actually went on a uh, a forum, uh, an Erie forum, uh, up in Lake. Uh, actually, I think it was called Erie Mysteries and things like that. And uh, boy, there must have been about ten or fifteen people that came on and said, "Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, we you know we saw we know where the house." And somebody actually even. Uh, uh, emailed us what the house looks like today, a picture of the house today. Uh, we're going to use that in our presentation here in uh, Sharon next month. Um, so, yeah, it does, a lot of this fits. And actually, I had the the drawing of the uh, of the uh, dog boy up there from Mercer. And the guy who I talked to, he looked at it, and he said, that ex- almost looks exactly like what, what we saw up here in Erie. So it was pretty... It was pretty. It was pretty interesting. So it seems like that may fit because you know, from from where Mercer is to Erie, it's maybe about an hour drive, hour and twenty minutes at tops. So you could see that they might have moved. The family might have moved up there. So I even actually have the actual found out the actual name of the 
dog boy and uh, up in up in Erie, but I'm not going to release that because, you know, out of respect for the family. All right, Bruce, I got another caller from the 724 area code and then 231. You're on the air. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, I'm out on the air. This is Greg Kachua. Oh, Greg. Yes, Greg. Sorry. Yeah, uh, hey, everybody. I just wanted to mention okay. about uh, dogman sightings in Virginia. I know, I can't remember where I read it, but I have read of several reports from Henrico County, H-E-N-R-I-C-O. Yeah, I've got two of them um, <clears throat> out of that county, and Woodbridge um, was the other one that I've got. Um, but those are the only two of Virginia that I've got. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. Those are interesting because those were, I think, um, um, <clears throat> however Deaf County is pronounced. Um, how, how's that pronounced? Um, Henrico. Billy, uh, Billy Henrico. would know. I don't. Yeah. Henrico. 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 Yeah. yeah. There was two. Um, one like in two thousand and um, no, one in uh, two thousand and nine. I think was one, and the other one was, I think, right around, um, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say about 2007, 2008, because I think they were really close together, but they were in two different parts of the county. And that the sightings were very, you know, somewhat similar and stuff so yeah those are the only like i said those are the only two that i've even ever heard of coming out of there um you know the the one i um talked to uh, from woodridge i actually talked to that person and the one from Henrico, um i got from another researcher that uh, actually talked to those people up there on that one because they're, they're they're you know a lot of these you know different states i mean um, a lot of researchers, you know, Bigfoot researchers, Brian will tell you, you know, they get them and they they shove them off. You know, uh, they don't even want to bother with them or even pass them on to other people because there's not that many researchers um, that even looks into the dog man stuff. I, yeah, a lot I of think, them just laugh at them. You're right, buddy. Yeah. And there's probably less than – what, 10 people probably, you know, um, that's actually doing, you know, the dogman research that, you know, I don't, I don't think there's that many of them out there. Because, like I said, a lot of the, you know, Bigfoot researchers, you know, sit there and throw the stuff off, you know. But I've been getting, you know, Bigfoot reports, you know, from paranormal investigators and stuff, you know. So they, they're real good about sharing stuff. It's just the people mm-hmm. in the community, they they don't want to share anything. Greg, have you have you ever been involved in any dogman research? Me, have I been involved in dogman research? Uh, no, not actually. Uh, you know, I haven't gone out anywhere specifically looking for, you know, any evidence of dogman. Um, I sure would like to. I'd love to get down to Kentucky. I'd like to get up to Michigan. You know, go around to some of these places. But so far. The answer is no. Have you heard anything from anyone, other, um, you know, people about dogman sightings, other than the, uh, the ones we just talked about? I mean, just not well, in, in Virginia, but outside Virginia? Uh, well, there was two I was told about some years ago. Um, uh, supposedly there was a guy up on uh, somewhere near um, – Delmont, Pennsylvania, which is kind of east of Pittsburgh. It's uh, north of Greensburg, east of Pittsburgh. And uh, I was told this some years ago that this uh, this guy who was driving along the road at night and he, he was coming up near like a uh, fenced-in electrical substation with transformers and he saw something by the side of the road. He, it was big, dark, like hunched over. He it seemed like it was eating roadkill, and uh, supposedly it, it when he got up closer and his headlights illuminated it, it jumped up, and the, it's, it was the classic description of a dog man. This was supposed to have happened back in the early 80s. 
and it jumped up and ran up into the woods on two legs, and that was the last he ever saw of it. The other story that I was told uh, would have happened up near New Alexandria, um, up where near Homer City, where the it's kind of like around the edge, of, the end of the northern end of the Chestnut Ridge, where Route 22, when it was still two lane back in the 70s, it used to, uh, you know, it crossed the uh, Chestnut Ridge up there, and this guy was driving up the mountain on on the uh, two lane Route 22. Since then, it's been modified, and it's a it's a four lane, and the speed limit's much faster. But at that time, it was a 45 mile an hour speed limit. And he noticed this thing running alongside of of uh, his car, and uh, supposedly it was looking at him and kind of smiling at him. And he yeah, that was get, a report I, from that was a report from Dave Dragazin. We've been trying to get in touch with that guy, and so far, no luck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I definitely want to talk with him. Yeah, both of those reports were told to me by Dave Dragazin. Mm-hmm. and they were happened to two different people that he had told me that they were both members of the. Pennsylvania Bigfoot Society, um, you know, obviously the Pennsylvania Bigfoot Society didn't exist when they had their sightings, but ultimately mm-hmm. both people became members. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that, that's where I heard both both accounts. And that, those are the only ones that I've heard of in Pennsylvania other than the, you know, the more recent ones, the Shenango Valley and, you know, and all of that. Uh all right, let me uh, let me uh, let me break in here and get this other caller on the line. Caller from the eight one four area code. You're on the air. Hello, how's everybody doing? Good. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, Hi. And Carrie, hey, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Well, anyway, I I thought I'd hop in and give you my two cents. <laughs> All right. I don't want it, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we we've, we've been working, yeah, you know, not not like Jody and and Brian and and, and of course Linda. We, we don't we haven't been working on this as, as long as them, of course. But uh, we've been kind of just jumping on the bandwagon here because of recent reports popping out of our area uh, up in the Clearfield Clearfield County area, where uh, the one that Brian told you about just recently uh, happened in uh, July of this year, and about a year ago. Uh, Another report came in about a, a dog man. It was almost in the same area. I'd say it was only about, as a crow flies, probably about five, six miles away from that, from the last one. And uh, <clears throat> and just it, it's just a really interesting subject. I mean, you know, as a, as a person, I have a I have a hard time with it. You know, d- do I really believe that this could exist? I, I mean, it's it, it's a it's a hard subject to really bite into. But but, but people are seeing something, and, and you know, as a researcher, we got to you know, kind of listen to that and everything, but, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of strange things been happening in the area, though, it, you know, it, it, it's never been tied to the dog man thing, but, but you could almost do that where, uh, you know, we had horses that were in their, in their, um, in their pe- pens and was actually something reached into the pen and, and pulled it out <laughs> through the boards where it kind of ripped it apart, uh, Something came up onto a, uh, a horse in the middle of a pasture out there, and was able to catch it and tore the back end off the horse. Uh, of course, a lot of it was blamed on a on a uh, on a bear, uh, but I don't know. It's just some of the things are just a little bit strange to me, you know. As far as something reaching in, I never heard of a bear. Well, I, I guess it could happen if the bear was hungry enough, but like reaching into the stall and and, and pulling the animal out through the stall wall, you know. Uh, it wasn't long after that that uh, a man was found in the same area where the, uh, this guy uh, my wife works with saw a a man come out of the woods dressed up in full military garb with a machine gun, and whenever somebody asked, said, hey, what's going on, uh, he says, oh, there's a bear in the area. We're trying to hunt it down. And just strange things like that, you know, have been happening in the area. So I don't know. Sometimes it's real convincing, and sometimes it's just it's a tough one, though, you know. So Dave, is there? So do you think the government is covering something up? Is there some cover up here? <laughs> I don't. I don't know about that. I, I really don't. I. I mean, it's just. I mean, it's possible. I guess anything's possible. Just. Uh, I guess it just whenever 
you know, you got two sightings in, a, in an area, and then you got all this other stuff going on, uh, and 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 the, you know, this, these kind of things with like the horses and stuff typically don't even get get uh, tied up with any, any kind of like Bigfoot reports or anything like that. But so, something reaching in and just tearing it apart kind of makes you wonder. You know, they could be. They, I, I don't think uh, a, a, a government guy is going to tell you he's hunting for a, a werewolf if you actually encountered it. <laughs> well, let, let me let me tell you that about this with my input. Um, we had a sighting in Butler, um, well, it's Butler County, but it was um, back in early part of the summer, and this thing came into this guy's um, farm area, um, took two ponies, uh, literally ripped the head off of one of them, uh, but he took it into a field and killed them, and went to attack the two larger ponies. Uh, horses that were in there and I mean I've got photographs of the horses and everything what this thing did and um, the farmer when I when I talked to him he said when the sheriff's department came out the sheriff's department called the DNR and the DNR came out and he said they were large canine tracks that was inside the crowd you can see them and he said they came up there they with the rake and they raked the tracks over literally raked the tracks over and told Mm -hmm. him that these were devil worshipers that did this. And, Mm -hmm. you know, this, this is what happened. And they, you know, they basically told him this is what the story was. And, um, I spoke to him probably about two months ago and he said he still to that day is seen guys in ghillie suits with, you know, high power rifles on his property. Yeah, you know, you know. So I I know, I know there's something going on because I you know I I know um, that the DNR and the U.S. Forestry Service has a code name for the dog man. They call him the Black Dog, just like uh-huh. law enforcement has a code name for Bigfoot. They call it the Black Cow. So they're they're aware of these things. They're, they're you know, is there a conspiracy? You know where they're trying to cover things up. I I don't think so. I just it's just one of these things with like with Bigfoot. I just don't think that they know how to deal with the situation. And they're just hoping that nothing happens where someone gets hurt. And I think that's what it comes down to. I don't think that they're actually uh, um, you know like the United States government covering things up, like with UFOs and things like that. Uh, we we discussed this before. Um, do you wonder though if maybe they are? Because imagine if I know around here we have camping, tons of recreation all the time. And the state parks would suffer if families and people, you know, were afraid to go out in the woods. Well, yeah, I, yeah, true. Because you know, they lose money, and and I mean, it's important for people to get out. But that was one thing we. We were kind of wondering, like, if they were to hide it, I mean, do you think they would hide it for that reason? Do you agree with that? or? Well, there was a researcher, real real quick, um, there was a researcher in Texas that was out in the field doing dogman research, and he actually came upon a campsite that was literally ripped apart. He said there was blood all on the tents, everything. Um, You know, there were no human remains or anything, but they were large canine tracks. And um, he said that the FBI confiscated his video of that. And he even had it posted on Facebook, and they had it removed from Facebook. Wow. You know, so, you know, they, they I, it, it's the same thing, you know, like with, with you know, um, the logging industry. You know, if, if you know, you sit there and say Bigfoot exists, you have to sit there and protect the lands. And, you know, by protecting the land, you're protecting forestry. And then that cuts out the logging industry. And a lot of people are going to, you know, be, you know, <laughs> without money. It's it, it comes to the same thing. You know, if, if you want to say hypothetically mermaids exist, you know, and they just happen to be where the big crabbing industry is, <laughs> you know, what's going to happen? You know they're going to go up there and kill them off. You know and you know to try you know to get their money. You know from the crabbing industry because you can't just sit there and, and say no. You can't 
go up there, and, and that's what they're doing. You know. Well, you know what, Jody? The last thing you want to do is meet a mermaid with crabs. Oh, you ain't kidding, baby. <laughs> you ain't kidding. No, I, I use that as an example. I don't believe in mermaids or centaurs or anything like that. But my point is what I was saying is that, you know, if you know if something exists, it's going to most likely exist in, you know, an area where money is to be made, like, you know, the logging industry or where crabs are or whatever, you know, and things. So, and, and, you know, the human species, you know, just, you know, has a hard time coexisting, you know, with other species, let alone another species that's human, you know, so. Right. Yeah, Brian, we had a really, uh, really good good time with you um, researching this past weekend. Thank, thank you and Terry for coming up. Oh, thanks for having us up. We had a blast. We had a blast, guys. And then us too. Thanks. Anytime we like, like Brian, you know, he'll pass along any kind of research for the dogman. I know he's been really, you know, it's been a passion of yours for a long time. Mm-hmm. So it's always good to get out and learn some a few things from you. Yeah, I, I thank actually Jody and Linda for for actually getting me into that part of the research. Those uh, Jody and Linda were the two main ones that got us, you know, down here interested in that. So thanks, Jody. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> but you know, Brian will tell you this too. Brian, you know, w- you know, we were in this, you know talks with Destination America about actually doing a show on dogmen, you know, and the sightings and stuff, and they were, you know, really into it. And then you know they felt well it's just going to be too scary, and then finally they came to the point and said well you know legitimacy doesn't sell so and I think it came to the point that you know they were just they felt it was be too scary, you know of a show and people wouldn't wouldn't understand it, so. Really, uh, they think that would be scary. Have you ever watched like you know Keeping Up with the Kardashians? I mean, oh my God, that yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's the bejesus out of me. So let me ask you guys something, okay? This dogman phenomena, and, and so obviously we're gonna we're gonna go one at a time here. I'm gonna ask this question first to Jody, then Brian, then Carrie, and then Dave. And Greg, are you still on the line? Uh, I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Uh, all right. He's, so Greg, you can follow up. But here's my question to you all. Sure. All right. Do you think it is worth your while to follow up with these dogman sighting reports, considering the fact that there's such scant evidence to support it? I mean, wouldn't your time be better spent following up with other reports, you know, you know, other crypto reports or Bigfoot reports? What is it about the dogman reports that you guys just don't, you know, put them aside, that, you know what, this is crazy, this is nuts? Jody, you go first. Because there, there, there's a lot of sightings out there, and a lot of these sightings, you know, <clears throat> are coming from credible witnesses. But on the other hand, you know, um, you could be fooled by a lot of these witnesses. But I really think there's something definitely to this. I mean, I have found tracks, large canine tracks. Um, I, I have one. Actually, I got out of Germantown. Well, I got two of them I got out of Germantown. And, you know, um, the guy from the ODNR, when he looked at it, he said, if it was a bear, you know, you're looking at a 800-pound grizzly bear. You know, so there, there's, there is some definitely, you know, proof that there's something there. You know, not so much, you know, um, human testimony, but there is a lot of evidence. You know, you're having a lot of kills you know, you're having a lot of tracks. So I, I truly believe that there's something to it. And no, I wouldn't want to, honestly, I, there's nothing else I would want to do than this. I, I really enjoy doing this. Okay. Uh, Brian? Well, I, I kind of agree with Jody. Uh, you know, being a cryptozoological group, we, we research all unknown uh, animal sightings. So, um, we don't get a lot of them either, so, you know, we don't get a lot of sightings that we can actually investigate, but when, when we do, we do try. Um, hey, you know, what better excuse to get out in the woods and, you know, be, you know, go out, go out with people like Dave and Carrie, and it's just, 
it, it's been fun. You know, we've we have not found any physical evidence yet. You know, you know, Jody has found some possible cracks. Uh, we haven't, but um, it's not going to stop us from not doing it. Uh, somebody, I do believe somebody has to do it. If there is anything to it, somebody's got to check it out. You know, why not us here and Dave and Jody? You know, why not? Oh yeah. Okay, Carrie. I think it's important um, as far as looking into anything that's a possibility when you're a researcher. And like with CCS, you know, there's crypto, crypto, um, a lot of crypto, cryptids out there. I'm sorry. But um, my aunt, like, lives out where we were just at, and she has heard things, you know, and things she can't explain and she's always lived out in the country and her sons are older and just them telling me different things that they've heard and trying to explain things and telling me that their animals were scared and their dogs wouldn't go outside and things like that. I just feel better even just looking into it for the witnesses sake also just knowing that, Hey, I saw this or I heard this, you know, we know you guys look into these kind of things and we have experienced researchers like all of you you know, that do this, I think it's really important um, to look into any any kind of evidence, just just in case. You never know. And you have fun doing it anyway, so might as well. Uh, great. Um, Dave? I, I, I agree with it, what everybody else said, and but I'd like to add something to it, though, is, you know, I don't think it's a waste of time, especially with the for the, the off chance that it is a misidentification Bigfoot. Um, I mean, really, in all honesty, even with Bigfoot, we really don't know what we're dealing with. Uh, let's say, you know, even just take, for instance, like, uh, you know, the bear PA. Some bear have, like, an elongated snout. Some of them have, like, a snub-nosed bear. What what if Bigfoot, you know, had those different characteristics? And a lot of times they get those char- different characteristics on what they're eating or how they eat. Uh, like the garbage nose bear, uh, you know, the, gar- the bear that each garbage usually has like a, a, a protruding or elongated snout. Uh, you know, just just an off chance that, you know, you, it might be something else too. So mm-hmm. it's not a waste of time. Well, um, and Greg? Well, I agree with everything everyone else has said too. And uh, I would like to add that um, I think it's very strange when you have these uh, areas being closed off suddenly and people seeing uh, men in ghillie suits heavily armed, DNR coming out and raking over tracks. I mean, yeah, that's very, very suspicious. Uh, to me, that's almost a, a validation that these things do exist and they know about them. I mean, that's very strange behavior, you know. Uh, in my opinion. I don't think it's a waste of time at all. Um, I don't feel that I've been interviewing people long enough to trust my own instincts that, you know, whether a person's a credible witness or not. But, uh, you know, if it was determined by somebody that's more experienced than me that that a person has a credible sighting, I sure would go out and investigate it. I wouldn't go out alone. I would go with probably no less than three people, and I would definitely go armed. But a 454? Uh, at least. <laughs> at least. <laughs> well, you know, I think you would go armed, armed no matter what, Greg. You're, you're I don't, definitely I don't, a prepared individual. I don't go to my mailbox unarmed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not visiting you, Greg. Bruce and I, we go out with our oh, knives be safe. and stuff. So. All, right, no Bruce, all right, Bruce, we got another caller on the line. Caller from the area code 419. You're on the air. Hey, guys. It's Elisa. Hey, Elisa. Hey, Elisa. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? You're doing great. So, Alisa, did you did you want to weigh in on this debate about the dog ban, you know, phenomena? Yeah, I don't. I don't know how to feel about the dog ban one hundred percent. I mean, 
I don't, I believe he's will, but I don't think there's enough evidence on him yet. You know? Yeah, I I agree with you. It's, you know, uh, I think all the researchers who, who are online with us, uh, I think they are truly very scientific in that they, they're not dismissive of things. Um, you know, it, but it comes down to, you know, you only have limited resources. You have limited time, limited funds. You know, none of us are, you know, are uh, making millions of dollars off of researching these, you know, cryptids. And so you have to, um, you have to, sometimes you have to make a choice. You have to make a conscious decision. Am I going to, am I going to follow up on this or would my time be better spent following up with, you know, a different signing report? And, you know, that's, that's a question that each researcher has to evaluate on his or her own, you know? Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I've been getting into all that stuff, but I just I don't know how I feel about the dog man because I've been looking up and I haven't seen that much of the dog man. Yeah. Well, there there are more and more dog man sightings and reports. Uh, and, you know, at the time, when I first heard about the dog man, that was probably in the early 2000s at some point. And... I never gave it two thoughts. I just totally thought, well, that's crazy, you know. And since then, there have been a, a number, I mean, numerous reports coming out. It's, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a show, I think it's called Paranormal Witness, where they, they sort of did a reenactment of this farm up in Maine that was besieged by the yeah. dogmen. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was- uh, you know, like I said, there those sighting reports are out there, and you know, the question is, what do you what do you do with them? So, it's good to know that you know these folks who have joined us tonight that you know they're they're not being dismissive of these reports and they're following up with them, and you know they're they're giving them their due diligence. Um, and can I can I tell you ahead. about one report we didn't touch on? Sure. Do we have time. Sure, yeah. Um, it was about in November, uh, this past November, and uh, we had a report that a guy was walking his dogs, and it was, like Dave said, he 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 talked about it a little bit. It's not far from um, where we were just, at, you know, with Brian, with that the other report that someone had sent in. Um, but what happened was he, he walked his dogs, he hunted this area his whole life, and um, he always, like, took his dogs, you know, on the same trail every morning. And um, one morning he said his dogs were just flipping out and they were very frightened and they wouldn't even go. Like they halted. And they're they're nice, you know, large dogs. And um, he said that the one was even crying and he saw this. He said at first he thought it was a Bigfoot. He couldn't believe his eyes because he doesn't believe in those kind of things. But this thing was so, it was like, how how tall did he say that was? I, I think like seven feet tall. Don't quote me on it. But um, it was, pre- you know, pretty tall. And he said that the snout came out like a dog. And it totally ignored them. It ignored the dogs that were, like, barking and, you know, and, like, backing off and crying. And it just went right across the path, almost like it didn't, it didn't even give him a, him a look um but yeah that's um butch watowski that was one of his um one of his reports that he asked us to look into for him and so we did our you know and um we we reported back you know on our findings we didn't see anything up there you know we were only we're only like 20 minutes away from the area and um but it was interesting and it was interesting that 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 hunter, you know, this man, you know, and is he won't even go back there, you know. And this, we're talking about a guy who's like in his, in his fifties, and he's frightened, and um, he he definitely saw something. And his animals doesn't even want to, you know, he doesn't want to hunt there anymore. Um, so yeah, there was, you know, the the four of us went up and and we looked around for prints. We tried to see if there's anything we could, you know, 
could get for evidence, but we were unsuccessful. But that's just one of those stories, and that's in the same area that the horses were mutilated, that there was another report in July of this year. So it's like, how do you how do you ignore it, you know? Well, so do we know for a fact that someone analyzed the remains of those horses and determined that it, in fact, was not a bear? Did that? I mean, I agree. That is, the, it's bizarre. It's bizarre behavior, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Um. That's the, what I had heard, and it was in the newspaper, um, you know, because it happened two different times. It happened also, like with the horse, like Dave said, that was out of the of its um, of its fence, and the farmer, you know, found it when he was out, you know, for a walk. It was missing, um, and then the other one was literally pulled through. But yes, they are saying that it was a bear. It was you know, like a bear that had, like, rabies or something, you know, like something was very wrong with this with this bear, and they did put the bear down. So I'm anxious to see if anything else happens, you know, this coming summer. But that was, like, that was two years ago, so. Mm-hmm. But weird noises up that way, too, you know what I mean? Um, my friend who, she told me, you know, that her dad, he, like, they live out in that, in the, you know, not far from there. And, she, like, she, you know, he's not afraid of anything, hunts all the time. He's, you know, they have a farm themselves, too. And But he um, he heard these weird noises. Um, she told me about the next morning. This was in October, about three years ago. She said he couldn't explain. He didn't know if it was, like, two coyotes you know, either mating or bobcats or something, but it sounded horrible, and there was, like, it sounded like two big cats, like, just, like, literally tearing each other apart. So um, he was going to go out because he wanted to check on his, you know, on his livestock and stuff, but he, he he was afraid to go out. So she just asked me, have you ever heard of anything like that? And I said, no, I haven't. But... She wanted me to, you know, let Dave know about it and see what his thoughts were. So I don't know. You just, it's just one of those, it's just one of those um, interesting mysteries that hopefully someday will get solved. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> just, it, you know, let's just add it to all the other mysteries, right? I mean, chances are we'll we'll never get to the bottom of it. How long have we been? How long have we been studying this? Bigfoot phenomena, you know. Yeah. And one of the one of the clearest videos that we've ever had is still under after all these years under intense scrutiny that it's, it's not authentic. So. Well, anyway, Bruce, if, it's inter, if it's interdimensional, you're never going to catch it, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Where's Fred Saluga, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, saw, good, good old Fred. I, I wonder uh, if I could. I I wonder if I could make uh, two quick comments here while we get another minute left. Would that be we're all right? Over, we're actually over our, our time, but... Okay, uh, I just remembered that the author, Patty Wilson, uh, a few years ago at the conference that uh, Brian and Terry have up in Butler, uh, she she was mentioning uh, during her uh, presentation about some sightings of a dogman-like creature somewhere up in central Pennsylvania. This would have been, uh, oh, this was probably like four or five years ago that she was mentioning it at her presentation. And uh, I think she wrote about it in one of her books. I'm not sure. But the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, David Politis came out with his fifth book in the 411 series. Uh so uh, that might be something people might not know. Might mm. want to look at getting that fifth book. Well, David That's... Flightis will be at, will be at Burr Oak this Saturday, which we're going to go talk with him. So uh, anybody's interested, the uh, Burr Oak conference is uh, this <clears> Saturday, <throat> and David uh, David Flightis will be there. So awesome! I'd like to thank everyone who called into the show this evening. Uh, you know, it was a really great. Great topic, and really appreciated all of your comments. We're a little bit over our time here. It's uh, about 15 minutes. 
But, um, Billy, did you want to say some last words? Well, I just wanted to thank Jody. Um, Jody, appreciate you coming online. I know that uh, you probably stay pretty busy, so we appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, also, Brian, uh, Dave, Carrie, uh, appreciate you guys coming on here also. Anytime. Uh, and, and, of course, Greg, appreciate you calling in. You, you're becoming a regular uh, uh, call in. <laughs> I listen to the show every week without fail. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, hey, thanks for having us. Yep, Billy. you're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Yep. Thanks, guys. You have a great night. Yep, you too. Bye. All right, Bruce. I think we've tied up another show for the week. Definitely. Great show, Billy. Yep. And uh, so do you have anything else before we uh, end the show tonight? No. I I think I'm... we're, we have a good show coming up next week, right? Well, let's let's hope so. It's something that I'm working on. Um, so if I can if I can get in contact with the individual, I will uh, be putting it up. But uh, I'm still still working on that contact. You know, some 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 folks are really hard to get a hold of. Yes, I know. As you know. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm working on it, so hopefully we get an answer soon, and then we'll announce we'll announce that. Yeah, I like these sort of I like these uh, calling shows, Billy. We you know we, we get to uh, connect with a lot of researchers and find out what they have to say on the subject, and it was it was really interesting to hear hear them all their different opinions. Yeah, yeah, it is nice to to get those opinions. All right, Bruce. Well, if you don't have anything else, the only thing I will announce is not this coming weekend, but the following weekend is the Mothman Festival up in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Um, the event's been shoot. How many years has it been running, Bruce? You know, you got me, Billy. Uh, it's been been going on for quite a while. You know, I know I've been going for at least what five or six years, and it, it's always a good time. Yeah, so uh, Janine and myself, we'll we'll be there uh, weekend after next. Uh, I know Jody Cook's going to be there. Uh, Brian Feach, Fred Saluga's going to be there. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, if you if, especially for anyone who's never been, um, you know, we recommend it. I mean, it's just a good time. It's like a big, it's like a big street party, you know, and uh, we enjoy it. And it's just a it's just a good time. So you know you get to meet the men in black, um, check out the Mothman Museum, and then of course I just heard uh, a few days ago that the uh, guy that sculpted the uh, Mothman statue passed away. Oh, yeah. So um, I'm sure they'll have some kind of memorial or something up for him. I'm sure. So. You know, I, I I actually uh spoke with him last year, Billy. He was a he was at Mothman last year. Really? And you, you know, here's something really weird. So I was talking to him and I, I you know, I said it was a pleasure to meet you because you know, he was the the artist who sculpted the that that metal Mothman statue that that's right there in the center of town. But he also sculpted, you know, those other statues like um uh you know, on the other side of the wall. Mhm. You know? Yep. And he's very, very talented. But so I said, you know, he was he was selling these little miniature Mothman statues. So, you know, I, pur- I purchased one. So I said, you know, ah, this is really great. You know, I hope this, I hope to see you next year. And he said, this will probably this will be my last year. Wow. I, I you know, I didn't really think anything about it, but right. I, he, I think he probably knew. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we all get to that point, you know. Um, you, you, I have a feeling that you, you kind of know, you know. You get to a point in your life where you, sometimes I think if you, you know, you get to where you lose your will to, 
to live, but, you know, you can kind of turn the off switch on, you know? Yeah. So. Well, that's, uh, you know, he will be dearly missed. He's a, he's a great guy. Uh, and I just knew him to be a really generous, kind-hearted, you know, person. And, you know, I, I wish I could have known him longer, but he will definitely be missed. Yep, that's for sure. All right, well, we want to thank everyone for uh, being in the chat room tonight. We had uh, well over in the mid-20s in the chat room, so that was great. Uh, love seeing you guys in there every single week. Uh, thanks for everyone who called in. We had several people listening in on the phone lines, so we appreciate each and every one of you guys. So until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, we hope you guys have a great rest of the week, a great upcoming weekend. And we will see you next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you for listening to Sasquatch Watch Radio. We appreciate every one of our listeners. We hope you enjoyed our program. Don't forget to tune in again next week for another fun and informative program. Please visit our website at www.sasquatchwatchradio.com and leave us a comment about the show. We want to hear from you. Until next time, keep on looking for the big guy.